We gotta talk about this new sewing machine cause it's a beast. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. Let's get into this Juki DDL 8700 industrial sewing machine I picked up this past week. It's been about two years since I introduced a new sewing machine here on the channel, and judging by my analytics, you really like sewing machine videos. So I've been doing some research as to what type of sewing machine I wanted to get to feature and do some videos, tutorials, and I realized I haven't ever gone into industrial sewing machines, and that's something I get asked a lot about. I started researching Juki because I've never owned a sewing machine from this manufacturer. It is very popular. They have quite a few different types of machines, and they seem like workhorses. They're very popular among quilters and bag makers, and I do quite a bit of that here, so I thought that would be a good fit for me. Now, they have a line, it's like the 2000 and then the 2010 Q, something like that. They're more tabletop machines. They also seem to be pretty uh, strong, but a lot of sewists are also gravitating towards the industrial line. I wanted to take a closer look at those models because they are pretty similar, so if I do a video on this machine, people with similar machines can also follow along because they have similar parts and inner workings. I was looking at this line because I've never owned an industrial and they do seem really cool. They're very powerful, very fast. They have a lot of features. Now this is a straight stitch, lock stitch only machine, single needle. So it does not do different types of stitches. It does one stitch very well. Juki is a Japanese company that makes a lot of different types of equipment, not just sewing machines, but they are pretty well known for the sewing machines. So let me tell you about the DDL 8700, which is the model you see right here. According to Juki, it was created using 3D CAD design technology. It has low vibration, low noise. The machine head provides the operator with a comfortable work environment. It has a large throat space, meaning the distance between the needle and the arm of the machine, so you can sew bigger projects, hopefully quilts, which is something I'm going to be attempting on this machine. It sews up to 5,500 stitches per minute. And I also ended up getting the servo motor, making it a little bit quieter, and you can adjust the stitch speed. It does come with the knee lift, and I'll probably be using that more than the lever to pick up the presser foot because it's a lot easier that way. And if you use the knee lift, you can raise the presser foot up to 13 millimeters high, which allows quite a bit of space for your sewing project. Now this is a mechanical machine and not a computerized one, but that should also make repairs and maintenance simpler and easier to do. Down below in the description box, I'll be sharing some helpful links straight from the Juki website, the product spec sheet, so you can get the 411 on this particular model and I also found the instruction manual online. Super helpful and it's not super complicated or really long. Shows you the basics and there are a lot of helpful diagrams like I looked at them for threading the machine and winding the bobbin. There are quite a few differences between your regular domestic home sewing machine and an industrial sewing machine. They take different types of needles, they're built differently, and when you lift up the head of the sewing machine there is an oil pan that you need to keep filled. According to the user manual, the DDL 8700 is meant for general fabrics, lightweight, and medium weight materials. They do make different versions of this model. There's the DDL 8700A, which is meant for lighter weight or general fabrics. There's also the DDL 8700H, which is meant for medium weight materials to heavy weight materials. So if you do want to sew very heavy, bulky things, you may want to look at the 8700H. Out of all of the various ways you can buy a sewing machine, I ended up finding this one on Facebook Marketplace. It is a guy who's from New Jersey, down near the Sarasota area, who sells Juki machines. He can also service them. I'm gonna leave his phone number down below. His name is Lucian. Really nice guy, and I got a great deal on this. Plus, it came assembled, so he came to my house, delivered it, and I did not have to put together this machine. Thank goodness, because I would have been here forever, and I would have never made this video. So if you are interested and you're in the Sarasota area, I will leave his information below. He did say, text him, don't call him. That's probably the best way to reach out. Really likes to stay within the Sarasota metro area. So if you live way outside of that area, he's not for you. But he sells Juki machines. He also has some other industrial machines. And I ended up finding his listing on Facebook. I had a great experience with that, I know. Can you believe that? The needle has grew. The grew has to be on the right side, the little grew. American is 16X231 or DB, uh, DBX1. That's, uh, I think, Japanese system. But American is, is uh, 16X231. So we started with the medium speed 
on the bottom, you adjusted the speed. So let's say if speed like, you know, like, like this. And if you press it gentle, the machine goes slow first. And then, and then go to the max speed. It's nothing. Do you have any tips on tension? What do you think? No, you th th then you look at it on the bottom, and if it's nice flat, you do nothing. If you got lip loops, then you have to go to the right, put more tension. And okay. if you see loops on the top, then you then the bobbin is something wrong with the bobbin. Okay. Usually, usually you don't put bobbin right. Okay. And this is reverse, so but you have to hold it to so machine uh, go reverse. You see it? Okay. But you have to hold it. This is right now is medium stitch. If you want a little longer. It go a little bigger number. If you want to change any feet, you just unscrew this screw and you put different feet. Any feet. It's all standard feet. This is scary, okay? It's not scary. It's not scary. No. All right. Oh, well, this is a huge pedal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Feels pretty comfortable so far. All right. Yeah, I haven't lost a hand yet, so maybe we're. We're doing pretty good. This machine seems to be widely available online, although you do need to be careful when you're looking at the listings. Some of them come with the servo motor, some don't, some come with the table, some don't, some come assembled, and some you have to do the assembly yourself. So be really careful when you're looking at these listings to make sure you're getting what you think you're getting, if that makes sense. Prices are kind of all over the place, but I will say this. I ended up paying less for this industrial version of a Juki than I would have paid for what I'm seeing the Juki TL2010Q machine. And that's the other one I was looking at. It was between that one and this one. And because I got a better deal on this one, that's why I decided to go with the 8700. I've been kind of playing around with it the past few days and this thing is powerful. Like I can't even express how much power this thing has. Well, actually I can so much that it keeps tripping the circuit breakers in our house. Oops, okay. In order for me to use the machine, I have to walk around the house and turn a bunch of other stuff off. So apparently my husband says something like, we might be experiencing like a power surge when this thing first kicks on. So there were a few instances where I started sewing on this thing and all of a sudden the lights flipped off. Before I really got down to business, I watched a bunch of different videos on Juki Industrials just to familiarize myself with the line and to feel a little more comfortable when I actually sat down to sew and figure things out. So I did figure out how to wind the bobbin. That actually was pretty easy. We're going to go over winding the bobbin and inserting it into the bobbin case. The machine comes with a thread stand and it can hold either two cones or spools of thread. I've already got mine placed into the holders. The left one is for the upper thread that will be purple. The right one is for the bobbin thread and that will be green. So you just place it onto the thread spools and then run your thread up through the holes under the guide up top. Now I'm taking my bobbin thread and I'm going to thread it through this little hole at the back. And this is really cool. It is a built-in bobbin winder. Now we're going to sandwich it in between the tension discs and make sure to pull it to make sure it's actually sandwiched in real good. Now I'll take my metal bobbin and run the thread through one of the holes like this. I found this way to be the easiest for me. There are other ways you can do it, like you can wind it around a few times. I just personally like to hold it. Now you'll insert your bobbin on this peg right here and make sure it's in securely. This mechanism here pops back and forth and you want it pushed forward like this. You'll also want to make sure that the needle is not threaded because you will be running the sewing machine for this portion. With one hand I'm holding the thread and now I'll start running the sewing machine. And you can see it's winding the bobbin like this. I'm actually operating this with the foot pedal, so if you put a little pressure on it, the bobbin will wind, and then when you take your foot off the gas, the bobbin winding will stop. So at this point, I don't want it completely full, but it will stop once it actually gets full. I just don't need a full bobbin full of the green thread, so this is about as much as I'm gonna do. Now you'll just cut the rest of this off. Pull this little lever back and then take your bobbin off. And now we'll insert it into the bobbin case. There's already a bobbin loaded, so we're going to take it out and replace it with a new color. The easiest way to get it out, there's a little lever on here. Pull this out and then the entire bobbin case will come out with it. Here's what the bobbin case looks like with a bobbin in it. I need to get this thread out, so I'm just going to pull it through this little guide here. 
and this should come out. Here's what the case looks like empty. To load the new bobbin, you're going to want the thread up and over towards you. So when you turn it on the side, it looks like the letter P. So what I'm going to do now is take the bobbin case and insert the bobbin like this. You can see there's a small slit here and you're going to run the thread through here and then around this little metal piece and into this little cranny here. You should hear a little bit of a click or a snap. It should have a little bit of a give to it, but not too tight and not too loose. When you pull the thread, the bobbin should move counterclockwise in there. If it's moving clockwise, you've put it in incorrectly. And that came directly from the manufacturer's instructions. With this little lever on the front, if you pull it, the bobbin won't come out. So with it out, the bobbin is secure. When it's not out, the bobbin comes out easily. So if you're holding your bobbin case and you don't want the bobbin to come out, carry it around with this lever out like this. Now we'll load the bobbin case into the sewing machine itself. This is a side loading bobbin and you're just going to put it up in here and you'll want the little lever to be like in a more horizontal direction. So push this in and you should hear a click when it's in securely. You hear that click? Now your bobbin is loaded. The user manual also has a very detailed diagram on exactly how to thread the machine. I've already got my upper thread loaded onto the thread stand on the left hand side and it's run through the guide up at the top of the thread stand. I've been practicing and it's actually not as intimidating as it might seem. Run the thread from back to the front of this little hole in this little metal bar. There's a tension disc here. You're going to need to sandwich the thread in between it like this. So it should be going counterclockwise. Here's another metal guide and you're going to run the thread from right to left up at the top. Wrap it around. So think sort of like a uh, little candy cane here, candy cane stripe. And now you will run the thread through the bottom hole right to left like this. So you see it's coming out the top here on the left through the hole on the bottom down to the right. We're coming down here and you'll sandwich the thread in this tension disc. Make sure it's in there pretty good. You'll feel it, like you'll feel the tension. And now there's this little spring here and you're going to need to make sure that the thread is like this. When you pull it down like this, this metal piece should move. This part can be a little confusing because you might assume you next run it through this guide here and then down through the hook, but it's actually the opposite. And I checked the instruction manual and that's what it showed me. So I'm going to run it under this hook here and then up through this guide over the tension disc, okay? All right, now I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me to make sure that the take up lever is in a high position and the needle's in a high position as well. You'll run the thread right to left through this hole in the take up lever. And now there's another metal guide on the left hand side here. We're getting close to the end, I promise. There's another one near the needle bar. All right, and you're gonna run it through like this. You'll also thread this hole from front to back, right above the needle. This can be a little tricky. All right, here we go, it's made it in. We're actually gonna thread the needle now. You'll need to thread it left to right and when you insert your needle, you'll want the groove to be on the right hand side. This does differ a bit from your regular domestic machine where the flat part of the needle faces the back. Now the part with the groove on it will face the right hand side. Hence why you're threading it left to right. All right, here we go. Now you're probably asking, what about the bobbin thread? And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna lift the presser foot real quick run the thread through the middle of the foot here. Put my presser foot down. Holding the upper thread in my left hand, I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me. And by completing a full rotation, it will lift up the bobbin thread underneath. See? So now if I lift up my presser foot, the bobbin thread is now up here. And now you are ready to start sewing. Let's see the tension. I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit. Let's 
see how that does. One of the reasons I use two different color threads for this demonstration is to be able to check the tension pretty easily. You shouldn't be able to see bobbin thread on the top or upper thread on the bottom. This actually looks pretty good. I can't tell you how excited I am to really explore this machine and do some videos about the Juki DDL 8700. Obviously it's a bit too early to do a full out review because I haven't had it very long, but if you're interested in learning this machine along with me, I would encourage you to subscribe to the Sonya Report. And if you're here for the other machines, I know you love those too. I will definitely be continuing to do other videos about my brother machines, maybe even the vintage singer I have and the sale right. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and if you have the Juki DDL 8700 and you've got some great tips for using it or maybe some secrets also feel free to share that knowledge and I'm going to try out some of your tips. If you're totally new to sewing welcome it's a lot of fun. I have some videos on how to find the machine that's right for you at your budget and another one explaining the different types of sewing machines because it can be a little bit overwhelming. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video and remember whatever you're doing make it fun.